estrogen. Who? Ha. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. That's absolutely not true. And I'm so being funny and quirky today. I'm in a good mood. Um, so, hi, welcome to Tea with the Fertility Godmother. Come grab your tea and join me. I'm Denise Noyer Arez, and today we're going to talk about estrogen, specifically too much estrogen. What does that mean? What does that look like? And what you can do about it? So, come join me and let's unpack this. First of all, I would like to talk about uh, what estrogen is good for. We do need estrogen in our bodies, and I think it's really, really important that we know that because estrogen has definitely has a bad name, right? We think of too much estrogen maybe producing cancer down the road, and it can do that, and that's one of the things where too much estrogen can cause. But what do we need estrogen for? We need it for our bones, we need it for heart health, we need it for good memory, um, and in fertility, we need it to really produce a good juicy lining, right? That's the estrogen is what helps make the lining nice and thick, and it also communicates. So our hormones are always communicating with each other. So the other thing is, Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming on. Joy, welcome, welcome. Um, the other thing that estrogen does is, uh, I'm going to stay focused, so thanks for joining, and, and I kind of, I want to stay on track here. So, uh, so as, as I was saying, estrogen is really good for making a nice juicy lining, so you need estrogen for that, but you also need estrogen to tell the body, to tell LH, okay, the follicles are ready to ovulate. And so that it knows that that you're that to that it knows to release the egg, right? So those are the things, some of the things that estrogen is really good for and really important for. So we need it, but we need it in a balance. And the thing that estrogen does is it is it starts off sl um, low, it climbs, and then it, it comes down again. So what happens is if you have too much estrogen, so some of the symptoms for too much estrogen, so the best way to check is a blood test, of course, but it is fluctuating, so remember that. Um, but when, some of the symptoms you can be aware of, and this doesn't mean you have high estrogen, but if you do, these are some of the symptoms, okay? Um, you can have like lack of libido, you can have infertility, because what happens is your body may think that you've already ovulated and you haven't ovulated, so your cycles could be irregular, may probably short, because and then your body thinks that you ovulated, but then there's the other side of that, which you know you didn't ovulate, so the corpus luteum isn't able to make enough progesterone, and that kind of goes hand hand in hand, right? There's all these biofeedback mechanisms in our body, so amazing. But so breast tenderness is one, painful periods, heavy periods, headaches, um, weight gain. You might see some people like so PCOS. It's PCOS month, guys. PCOS is. Um, um, definitely can, you can have higher estrogens, right? But you have that, that weight gain in the middle, so, right? So um, it's really, you can see that. The other thing is men actually have estrogen and they can also be estrogen dominant as well. And something that, there, some of their signs and symptoms is lack of libido, that sometimes they get, um, they could develop breast and they also have that belly, the belly fat that's really hard to get rid of. So those are some of the signs that are important for, um, that you can be pay aware of. Sometimes we get headaches, fatigue, uh, that cloudy head feeling. Constipation is a big one and I'm going to talk about exactly why that is in just a minute. So those are some of the symptoms that happen and why it's important to have, have it, what, the, well, let me talk about what things can cause high estrogen. So our bodies can get backed up and it can come from the foods that we eat, right? We talked about last week, we talked about um, toxins and detoxifying. And um, I think I mentioned in there about the phytoestrogens or the, the um, endocrine disruptors. So this, our foods that we eat are really important to try to eat healthy and clean and eliminate plasticizers and those chemicals that are endocrine disruptors that can create the estrogen to stay in our bodies. See if we there's actually a gut relationship, believe it or not, with estrogen, and we have these um, probiotics, these little um, little microbiome in our microbiome that helps communicate 
with our body to break down estrogen so that we can get rid of it. So constipation is, you know, having a good bowel movement is really important, not only for all the other toxins, but to help keep your estrogen in normal levels because your body's producing it. We want it to also remove it when it's necessary as well. We don't want it to get caught up in there and create a, bunch, a big traffic jam, a bunch of chaos, right? We don't want that to happen. So that's something that's really important. The um, So one thing that you can do is have a high fiber diet. Um, and you know, I think that's really important. In fact, I got a message the other day from the ask, somebody asked me, I guess this is gonna be, I don't know if this is a new message or if this was something somebody came across because I know you guys are always researching um, and there's not there's a lot of misinformation out there. But somebody said, can a high fiber diet cause infertility? And a high fiber diet is so important for your microbiome, for your digestion, for your overall health. So I'm a big advocate of having a high fiber diet. And you know, I asked you last week to check in how much fiber are you having on a daily basis? The average person has about 15 grams of fiber a day, and really we need 30, maybe 40 grams of fiber a day, and lots of water as well. So fiber is something that's going to help you get rid of those estrogens, right? That's going to be really important. And then again, having a really good uh, probiotic that's going to help your body, help with your, your gut so that you have a healthy gut, you have the right um, microbiome to help break down and remove those the extra estrogens. So those are some things you can do that I think are really important for your overall health. And you know, the way I look at the body is if you're really healthy, then you're going to have a better chance of getting pregnant and having a healthy baby because your body's in balance. So if you're not on a probiotic, you're not eating a lot of fiber. So fiber feeds the natural bacteria in our body, the good bacteria, then you might want to consider definitely increase your fiber, but you might also want to consider um, a really good probiotic, okay? And that's something that you'll want to continue on for, for wellness, really. So that's something that you can look at. I always like to, when I work with women and men, uh, mostly I usually work with women, but sometimes we have to work with the guy too. And, uh, but, um, usually this is one, something I, I work with wellness. I want you to get really healthy and I want to just change the mindset a little bit. Cause when you're thinking, while you're doing all this stuff for fertility, really you want to look at the long game, right? You're really doing it for your overall health, which in account will affect your chances of getting pregnant because your body will function better. You're going to be healthier. Everything kind of just goes hand in hand. So it's all about the balance and with everything, right? So we even need some estrogen. We don't want to eliminate estrogen from our bodies, but we don't want to have too much estrogen because we don't want to go down that road of cancer and other problems that it causes with us. So those are some things that you can do that you can also do my Prepare for Pregnancy Fertility Cleanse. It really gets things moving, gets you, it pulls that stuff out, helps you get right on the right track. So if that's something you wanna learn more about, DM me or click on the link in my bio and you can find out more about that. I'm happy to, to share that with you. But just to recap, so we do need estrogen, right? We just need it at the right time right? And everything's about the timing, the right balance. We don't want to have too much. And uh, if we do, some things to do in general are to really have a high fiber diet, eliminate your the plastics um, and as many toxins as you can, really eat clean and probiotics. Okay, there you have it. Here's to your health and happiness. I'll see you next week when we're going to dive into PCOS in honor of PCOS Awareness Month. Make it a great day. Mwah. Bye.